Hi, I'm Kelly Chase and this is History Detective and today I want to tell you about Maria Bochkareva and the Russian Women's Battalion of Death. It was not until 2013 that women in Australia were allowed to serve in combat roles in the army. Almost a century before this, Russian women were fighting on the front lines. There was a lot going on in Russia. They were not only boots deep in the First World War, but the Russian Revolution was also beginning to brew. There was much internal conflict going on. Russia was ruled by a Tsar. However, for much of the country, they were living in poverty. And in 1917, smack bang in the middle of World War I, a group called the Bolsheviks seized power and removed the Tsar from the throne. Before the Russian Revolution, World War I was kicking along and there were many women who wanted to join the war effort to fight against the Germans, but there were laws preventing them. There was one way around it though. Women could get direct permission from the Tsar to join the armed forces. Enter Maria Bochkareva. Until this point, Maria had a pretty awful life as a peasant. She had an abusive alcoholic father, so she got married at 15 to get away from him. But her husband also turned out to be a brutal alcoholic. Then she met a petty criminal and ran away with him to Siberia. He was also an abusive alcoholic. So in 1914, when the war broke out, joining the war effort seemed like a good way for this 24-year-old to escape from the perpetual cycle of alcohol and violence. However, when she went to enlist, her application was refused because she was a woman. The officer told her she would have to get permission from the Tsar if she wanted to enlist. The only problem was that because of her peasant upbringing, she was barely literate. She convinced the officer to help her write a telegram to the Tsar. And you know what? The Tsar said yes. In her ghost-written memoir, she explained, My heart yearned to be there in the boiling cauldron of war, to be baptised in its fire and scorched in its lava. So off went Bochkareva to the Western Front, where she served for two years, where she was decorated for her service. One of those medals was the St George Cross, which was awarded for undaunted courage. During this time, she was shot in the hand and forearm, her leg was shattered by a bullet, and she had a shell fragment embedded in her spine, which paralysed her for four months. She was eventually rehabilitated and passed the physical to return to the front line. An article in the 1918 Melbourne Age describes her like this. In looks, she wears the uniform of an officer, khaki tunic, breeches and serviceable looking boots. Her jet black hair has been cut short and has a side parting. Powerfully built, of medium height, with an extremely intelligent face and a capacious forehead. Capacious just means wide or broad. So how did we go from this one female soldier to entire battalions of women serving on the front? A few years into the war, many Russian soldiers were disillusioned with fighting. There was a huge problem with desertion and mutiny. So the idea was struck upon that an all-female battalion could be created. The dual purpose was to inspire the men and have a civilising effect on them. Or if that didn't work, they would be shamed by the fact that women were fighting in their place. There was a massive response of women enlisting in the Battalion of Death and they were called the Battalion of Death because these women were willing to fight to the death. 2,000 women applied to be part of the 1st Battalion that Bochkareva was charged with training but this was whittled down to about 300. Another logistical problem was uniforms. Because of the war shortages, uniforms for women's body shapes were non-existent So the women persevered and wore men's uniforms. However, there was one particular problem with finding small enough boots to kit out the small-footed all-female battalion. Bochkareva also insisted that her troops all shave their heads, just like was regulation for the men. Having long hair in the trenches would have been a really dirty and itchy affair, so she probably had a really good point. Before I go any further, I want to introduce you to another interesting player in this story, a female American journalist called Bessie Beatty. She travelled to Russia during World War I and spent 10 days living in the trenches with Bochkareva and the Women's Battalion of Death. She interviewed many of the women and upon return to America wrote a book called The Red Heart of Russia. In her interviews of the women in the battalion, she reported on the fact that these women came from all walks of life, all with varied reasons for joining up. Once they were trained and ready to fight, there was only one problem. The male soldiers were a little bit confused about their presence. 
When the women's battalion were ordered to attack, the male soldiers, instead of supporting them, held a meeting to decide whether they should join in or not. The women just went to battle regardless and eventually half of the men decided to back them up. They ended up taking the first and second lines of the German enemies until they ran out of ammo and were forced to retreat. But the German soldiers were very upset at being defeated by women. After the success of the first all-women's battalion, this inspired the formation of 15 more units, which means about 5,000 women joined up. But this didn't last for long. Remember at the beginning I mentioned the Russian Revolution? This revolution at the end of 1917 marked the end of the women's battalion. You see, the battalions were set up by the previous leaders and the new government, the Bolsheviks, thought that women would be loyal to the previous government. In Bochkareva's case, they were correct. She really did not like the Bolshevik soldiers. She fled Russia to America. While she was in America, she found someone to ghostwrite her memoirs. The Bolsheviks were a communist system of government and America and Australia were both very anti-communist. So she had a captive audience for her memoirs and she painted the Bolsheviks in a very negative light. An Australian newspaper published some extracts of these memoirs in 1919 and here are some of the things that she had to say about the Bolsheviks. The hundred Bolshevik soldiers surrounded the officers, cursed them, beat them with the butts of their rifles and handled them like dogs. The Bolshevik soldiers then decided to gouge out the eyes of the five youths in punishment for their attempt to run away. He looked savage and his hideous laughter sent shudders up my spine. The bloodthirsty brute. She returned to Siberia in 1920 where the Bolsheviks captured and imprisoned her. After spending four months in jail, she was put on trial as an enemy of the state and executed by firing squad at the age of 30. Don't forget to hit subscribe and if you would like to hear an original song on this topic, there is a link to Beating Red Heart up there. And in the description below, you'll find a link to my website where you'll find a list of references and some teaching resources. This is Kelly Chase on The Case. I would like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on which this video is being recorded today. I pay my respects to the elders and knowledge holders past, present and emerging.